Hello everyone and welcome back to our video newsletter. In this video I want to talk to you about the idea of filing your own petition for rid of habeas corpus when your loved one has been illegally Baker acted and now they're stuck in a facility. Now I get a number of families who call me and say, Mark, why should I pay you to do this? I can go and file my own petition for habeas corpus. And you know what? You can. But let me share my experience with you as to how well or how not so well that typically goes. So the form that the facility is going to provide you, if they are even willing to give it to you, is going to be about two pages long, and you'll have about this much space to fill in your uh, your facts that you're alleging uh, that support your claim for, for a writ of habeas corpus. Now, first of all, in order to do that, you're going to need to be familiar with Chapter 394, which is the Baker Act, which is all of about 185 pages long, which is um, this document here. This is This is Chapter 394. This is the Baker Act statute. So you're going to need to be familiar with that before you can even start making allegations. But be that as it may, um, a couple of things can happen. Number one, if the facility um, bothers to even file it with the court, and I've seen where they didn't file it with the court, they just sort of reviewed it internally and said, well, you know, uh, we're not going to grant this. Have a nice day. Uh, I've also seen where they did actually submit it to a court, and then the court set a hearing. So if you don't already know, these cases are, are treated very much like a criminal case, except it's all done in secret. And so if you get to a hearing, there's going to be a table where a judge or magistrate is going to be sitting. There's going to be a prosecutor and a public defender, just like in a criminal case. And so what will happen is the prosecutor who represents the state, because your loved one is now in the care, custody, and control of the state and not you, is going to put on their witness, which is going to be one of or maybe perhaps both the psychiatrists who have, you know, uh, made these allegations that your loved one meets criteria. So they're going to present, you, you, you know, their testimony, and then the judge or magistrate is going to say, well, okay, you know, Mr. Family Member, Mrs. Family Member, friend, whoever it might be, they're going to say, okay, uh, go ahead, cross-examine the witness. And of course, you're going to be sitting there and, and saying, well, how do, I, how do I challenge the statements that have been made by the psychiatrist that my loved one meets criteria? How do I challenge that? What do I do? How do I cross-examine them? How do I comply with the rules of procedure, the rules of evidence? How do I even establish that my loved one doesn't meet criteria that are established within the Baker Act? And so when family say, well, I'm going to do my own habeas, I say, okay, you can do that, but I, I want you to understand the pitfalls of, of, of how that even works and how difficult it is for, for you to do that. Now, I'm going to show you, this is, this is what my typical petition for habeas corpus looks like, okay? And you can see, obviously, I've, uh, this is a case that we filed and won. Um, and I've, I've obviously, for, for privacy purposes, I've removed the names of the people that were involved. But this this document here, this is t this is ten pages long. Okay, that's a typical petition for writ of habeas corpus that I file. Sometimes they're a little bit shorter, and sometimes they can be a whole lot longer, depending on the facts and the allegations that we're making. And so, obviously, one of the reasons that you hire somebody like me who understands how the Baker Act works is well, because I'm going to be able to establish that your loved one never met criteria and shouldn't have been taken in the first place. And so, obviously, you know, there's a much greater chance of, of me getting your loved one out. Now, as a lawyer, I'm ethically prohibited by the Florida Bar from making guarantees. I can tell you have great success, you know, with these petitions. And once in a while, maybe one out of 10 cases goes to a hearing. But I've been a lawyer 27 years. I know how to cross-examine an expert witness. I know how to cross-examine a psychiatrist. I know if we even need to present our own witnesses. And those are the reasons you know, that maybe you want to consider hiring us to help you with, with this petition for writ of habeas corpus. With that said, um, if you have any questions about how, how this all works, about the Baker Act, uh, feel free to reach out to us, uh, send us an email. Uh, you can reach me, mark at bakeractattorneys.com. You can call us, 561-419-6095. Uh, or if you go to the website, bakeractattorneys.com, there is a frequently asked question section where I put out videos just like this one, so that, so that you know, folks like you can get the information that you need and you can get it quickly and you can get it for free. Anyway, nice to talk to you. Take care, be safe, and be well. Bye-bye.